I sort of tell you a little bit about myself. So my name is Rachel, as you can see. Um, and basically, I trained originally as an economist, um, but I've kind of lately got into doing more work um, in what we would call sort of data science. But for most of the roles I've had in, in many industries, um, I've worked with data, um, either in analysing it or in visualising it um, to build a story for people um, and to convey to people who don't necessarily understand that much about data and what that data um, is telling us. And if you want to follow me, please feel free to look at my repo on GitHub or um, to, um, link in with me um, as well. So today, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to create some images um, with some data on the COVID-19 um, epidemic. And I always like this quote that a picture is worth a thousand words. And that's very true. You can convey an awful lot of meaning through a visual. And Plotly is a very powerful tool um, for creating attractive visuals. But with that power, there also comes a certain responsibility as well. As an analyst who is putting together um, charts um, or even telling a story with data, there is a responsibility um, to understand what you're doing and understand how other people are going to interpret it as well. And as I'll show you with a few of the things we're going to do, you know, there is an opportunity in the way in which you create the chart to convey different meanings um, and to lead the interpreter into a different um, understanding um, of what is going on. And more precisely, what we're going to do, to, I'm going to do today is introduce you partly. I can't take you through everything. Um, there is a lot to it. And as you'll see, there's a lot of different parameters within the, the library itself. Uh, so you can tweak all sorts of things. So there's no way I could um, cover it all today. But hopefully, I'm going to show you how to make some nice interactive charts. Um, with the COVID-19 data. And then perhaps you can take away that code and build on it and make your own versions or even apply it to, to different data. So I'm, I'm going to manage your expectations in terms of how much um, we're going to be able to get through today. Um, and, the, and the thing you'll find about Plotly is um, the more you play with it, the more you find that you can um, do with it. We're going to start off by doing a little bit of data reading. I'm not going to go in depth um, into the data itself, but I will talk a little bit um, about it. So this isn't a class in, in epidemiology. And then I'm going to do a little bit of data wrangling um, with, with pandas to get the data in the right form that, that we need it to plot. And they're going to go through some basics, just making some very, very basic charts with Plotly before going on to show you some slightly different things you can do, a little bit more fine tuning and some more complicated charts. And finally, and if hopefully um, we have time, I'm gonna go through a little bit about how you might deploy this chart. So how you would make them into a dashboard or how you might um, put them on the internet so that um, other people can see the results of your, your creative genius. Um, or indeed, if you work in business, how you can share them um, between colleagues um, over the internet as well. So please do ask questions and I'll pause at a couple of points um, to try and ask, um, answer them. There are, as with all sort of libraries you might be working with, things that I don't know, but I can definitely go away um, and look them up for you. And I am also happy to follow up um, after this session as well if you've got um, more questions. So I'm not sure if you've, you've been sent this information already, but there is a repo and you can see it here. So if you're comfortable with Python, um, with Anaconda environments, with doing install, then please do feel free to clone the repo and follow it along. I do warn you, um, if you, um, maybe you've seen this, if you've had a look at the repo already, there is quite a lot of installing to do to get Jupyter to, to Plotly to work with Jupyter. Um, so uh, it's not something that can necessarily be done in, in, in two minutes. So what I would advise you, if you're not um, super comfortable with 
GitHub or with um, Python or with Anaconda environments that you just follow this session and then perhaps afterwards you go back and go through slowly the, the steps for installing everything um, to make it work. And I'll, I'm going to keep this repo up and, and possibly keep working on it as well. So please feel free to go away, take the code um, and, and do your own thing um, with it as well. So what is Plotly? So Plotly is an open source graphing library, which may, allows you to make high quality interactive charts. So an interactive chart is one where your user can actually do something with the chart. It can change elements of the chart. You, know, you might be able to um, pan in time or click certain series to go on and off or to zoom in or zoom out um, of the charts as well. And especially if you're not a, necessarily an artist by training, it actually provides some very nice and professional looking templates for your charts um, as well, without having necessarily to do lots and lots and lots of coding. It also provides lots of functionality for integrating your charts into a web page or just creating your own independent um, dashboard as well. Also, importantly, it's free, um, which is always good. Um, so you're at liberty to play with it as you like. Um, it, I'm going to talk about Plotly with Python, but it's also available as an R library and, and JavaScript um, as well, if you're f more familiar with those languages. And as you can see on this slide, there is a link um, to the manual, which is actually pretty good. I mean, not all um, library manuals are good, but this one is has a lot of examples um, and, and is very clearly um, laid out. However, the one kind of health warning I would say is there is a lot to it and it can be quite easy to get lost um, in, in the sort of small parameters and the sub parameters um, as well. Um, so, I mean, I guess the I think as a tool, it's it's very powerful, and you 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 have some very nice uh, visuals. I think if you are trying to make visuals for someone else, I would tend to still stick to something like Matplotlib. If I was just making charts to have a, a quick inspection um, of something else of, of some data, but this is th this is a very cool um, piece of software. Um, the other health warning. Um, is that like a lot of things in Python, there are many ways to achieve things in Plotly. So I'm going to show you the way that I've put together these charts. There are different ways in which you can, can use the, um, the language that Plotly has. Um, so when you go online and you look at other examples, you may actually see variations, which in many ways is quite annoying because when you're trying to troubleshoot, um, it can get a little bit more complicated if someone the answer has been written in a slightly different format. But unfortunately with Python, um, that is something um, that you have to live with. So let's get started. So I'm now just turning to, to the repo itself um, for anyone who's following along. So I just want to give you a quick flash of what we are um, going to attempt to achieve um, today. If we don't get time to go through all of these charts, then the, the code will still be up there um, on the repo. But this is a, a, dash, a Plotly Dash application with a number of ch interactive charts in it. Um, I'm just going to talk you through a little bit about how we might um, construct uh, some of these. And it's, it's all relatively easy to do once you've got the basic code um, in place. Stop that. Right. So let's turn to the basic charts workbook. So first of all, let's talk a little bit um, about the data. So the data come from, and I always get this wrong. It's the Euro, I think it's the European Centre for Disease of the ECDC. Um, and basically, at this link, um, which you can see, so there's actually the explanations. Um, around the data, the actual data itself can be downloaded directly um, into Python using pandas, um, and it's republished every day um, at the moment. So every day when you um, refresh this workbook, you're getting um, an extra 
um, days worth um, of data. And just for those of you who are wondering why I put this argument, um, this, there's a weird formatting issue with one of the sort of small islands that include the data, which require you to select um, specify the number of columns you want. So that's why that's there. And firstly, let's we just have a quick look at what's in the data. So essentially, you've got four four columns. So, it's not, so first thing to say is it's relatively clean um, already, which is good. Um, you've got four columns here dealing with different aspects of, of the date. So this is a, a full date. And there's day, the day, the month of the year from that date. You've then got number of cases. That's daily number of cases. You've got daily number of deaths. Then you've got the countries and territories, which is the full name country. And then you have two different codings um, for country names as well. And that's followed by um, some population data for each country. Um, you can then also look at just a little bit of, at a snippet of the data and you can see how it's laid out. I think just a couple of things um, to note looking at these two pieces of information. It's firstly, we can see that most of the numbered um, categories are already numbers. They're either integer or floats. That's good. Um, the one problem here is, is the date. That's not being recognized as a date time, which is potentially going to cause us problems later. Um, and also, I don't know if you've noticed that actually the dates here are in reverse order um, as well. So, so here you've got the most recent date first. So just because the way we chart, we chart from left to right. We're going to want to um, reverse that. So um, the first thing um, we're going to want to do is make those transformations to data. So firstly here um, is I'm basically turning the, the date rep column into a date time um, format. What I'm then doing is sorting all of these values by country and, and by date and making them ascending. So this then sorts out the problem of all the dates being in the um, in the wrong um, order. And then I just re-index it because if for those of you the annoying thing, the indexes don't change when you sort it, uh, which can cause you problems later when you think you're dealing with sequential um, elements, but because they're indexed, um, when it was sorted in a different order, you end up with problems. Then let's have a look as well at, at what data, what um, countries we've got um, in this data set. And that's obviously quite long. Good. We've got 204. So we've got a few, there's about 192 countries in the world. So we've got a few um, sort of extras. Um, there's here, you'll see there's cases on international events in Japan, or well, that's the cruise ship um, in Japan. But one thing that sir, please can you the zoom in? Zoom in, yeah. Is that you. Okay, no problem. Um, so here you've got all your all of your countries. Um, the one thing that that's missing, which I um, would be useful, is um, an aggregate for the world. So what's the world total? Because it's not here. So I've just created a, a, a total. Um, and what I've done is first just made a subset using the group by function, so grouping by date, and then summed all of the cases and all of the deaths. Um, and what you get when you do this is, is this table. So you've got an individual row for each date. What you will notice is that the population data goes up a lot over a few days. And that's not because the world population has gone, has gone up. It's because um, there are some countries that don't start off in the data set, but later on end up in the data set as they start reporting data. Um, so here's your, so we've created your world. We now want to add it back into the original data set. So we just need to create um, some variables to match all the variables that are in the original data set. So that's what I'm doing here. And then we concatenate it back um, into the original. Well, we've actually made a new data set here. So we've concatenated it with the um, original data. 
Um, and then what we can see, so we can see now we've got a, um, entries for the world for, for each day in which there's been a bit of report. So that's just some basic um, data manipulation um, that we've done here. So let's talk a little bit about the plots um, themselves. So um, from to plot with Plotly, for those of you familiar with Python, uh, you'll know you have to um, import Plotly. I'm using so throughout this, I'm using the, the plotly.graph object um, li library and sublibrary. Um, there are other um, tools, other wrappers for Plotly. So there's one called Plotly Express, which allows you to do quicker charts, but is, is far less flexible. So um, I haven't used that here. But just be aware there are other, other options um, for, for doing these um, charts. So, so the basic chart. So in your basic chart, you need your data. Um, here, all I've done is said I just want to select all the data relating to the world. You then have to allocate what you want on your x-axis. So here I'm going to put the date on the x-axis. You select your y-axis, what you want on your y-axis. So it's death, that's how the height of the bars. And then, so this is quite important, and this is fundamental to Plotly, you then have to describe the chart you want. So you'll often see these referred to as traces. So this is where you say, okay, I want a, a bar chart, and here's my X data, and here's my Y data. And you can then extend, as you'll see, we'll see in a bit, this description of the chart to add further um, arguments. You then tell it to, to make the chart with the trace, and then um, certainly, so you just need to say figure, show, tell it to show the figure. And this is what you get. So, within about one, so what, that's six lines of code, you've got your first chart. And, it's, and it looks pretty good. I mean, Plotly is a, a pretty sensible tool for taking that data and putting it in a nice format. From what you'll see, you've already got sort of interact, interactive aspects. So, you roll over the bars, it's telling you the date and the um, so what you, the number of deaths here as well. And you can do things, for example, like you can zoom in on the chart. Okay. Uh, I mean, this is not that useful here, but um, you know, for some charts, you might want to see a little bit closer with a certain portion of it. And you double click um, and you can come out of it um, as well. So, I mean, that's pretty neat for, for a, little, um, a little bit of code. So now, obviously, you're going to want to do something more complicated. So if you want to plot multiple series, what you effectively are doing is doubling up on what you did before. So, so now I'm going to plot the world and China. So here I've got my, I've got my data set for the world, I've got my data set for China. And then I say on the chart for the world, I want this my X and Y values. And for China, it's X1 and Y1 as well. And you just double up on the traces. So, so now I've got two traces that I want to plot. So you're basically telling it I want these two charts plotted on the same on the same figure. And it's quite relatively simple. So you just add where well, we had one trace before. You just add a list of traces. So it's important here that you remember to add it um, as a list. Um, otherwise, Plotly won't recognise it. And then you can show the figure. So you can see here, you've now got China um, plotted on the chart um, as well, um, which is interesting. And you can see here that it, this little spike here was where China changed the way it started reporting um, death cases. So there was a big, big spike um, on that day. But what's also neat about the way sort of Plotly does this automatically is, for example, I can click this and China disappears. And I can click it back on again. So I can get a, I can interact um, with this chart to get more or less data um, on the on the chart. So yeah, now we want to tidy this up um, a little bit. So this, here's where we start adding elements to to the um, the Plotly framework. So we're keeping the same chart as before. What we've done here is we've given each trace a name, which is then going to be picked up by the legend. And what we want to do is give it um, some titles. So um, this time we're, so this is 
this is new, we're going to give the, the figure um, some instructions about layout. The, before, we were just using all of the defaults. And here we've added um, a title to it. So that's the title to the chart. And we could add lots and lots of other different um, arguments here um, specific to the layout. We can also um, add um, layout elements to, the, to, to both axes as well separately. Um, and here I'm just adding a title. So you can see, and then we can see what's happened. So here you've now got your labels um, and we've got our um, titles as well. So more things that we might want to do with this kind of relatively um, basic plot. So we want to limit the x-axis because um, we might not want to show um, all of it. Um, and we want, might not want to have the chart the chart in kind of this dimension. We might want to make it shorter and fatter or, or longer and thinner. So here we're just doing exactly the same as we did before. This time we're adding parameters for the height and width um, into the layout. Um, so that will just change the shape of the chart itself. We're also then going to add this parameter called range to the x-axis. Um, you can also add a similar parameter um, to the y-axis as well if you wanted. But here the range is specified as a list with, um, with two arguments here. So here I've put in a date um, and then I've said it like that the upper limit should be the, the, the most, most recent date um, in the data. Um, and when we do that, you can see that the chart has actually changed um, shape a bit um, and we've got less data. Because uh, from January or in January, there actually wasn't a huge amount going on. So we've, we've got rid of some of um, that. Let me... And again, we've still got those kind of interactive elements. One, um, one other thing I just wanted to show you, hold on a second, is if you press this button, the little two arrows on top, you can also see when you roll over um, all of the data relating um, to that, um, that point, which can be, uh, can be quite neat when you've got multiple series um, on the chart. So other things you, you might want to do. So, I mean, we've made a bar chart here, but let's do something slightly different. So now we're gonna, we want to look at uh, a stacked chart, um, for example, and we're gonna, we're gonna change it to a stacked line chart as well, just to be um, different. Um, and we're gonna add in an extra series uh, as well. So here I've added another series, which is the, uh, in the United States. Again, defined the X and Y value for this, extra um, series and an extra trace um, as well. There's then this parameter that you need to put in in order to stack them. Um, it just has to have the same name here. So it'll recognize that all of these um, traces should be stacked on top of um, each other. And then add the extra trace to the figure. And um, all the other parameters are the same as before. And what you can see, you get a chart um, like this. And this, is, and this is very visually very interesting because you can see how at the beginning um, China accounted for for all of the cases basically of COVID. Then Italy took over, uh, but the USA in in this in recent couple of weeks has really um, seen a massive growth in the number of cases reported um, as well. So it's interesting. I mean, I think if you were to extend this, you might want to put more countries on or you could choose and you can see how you would like if there were specific countries that you're interested in you might you could just change those parameters there and and, and compare those um i did actually look at some um, so i spent a while putting nigeria and at the moment there's thankfully there's a uh, not much to report so, <laughs> so the charts don't um, don't look necessarily um that impressive so I'm, I'm i'm kind of focusing on the countries where i know there's been a lot of um cases and deaths but you know, when you play with it, feel free to, um, to change um, the countries that are being inputted there. So that's your, 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 the basics plotting. And it's actually, it is relatively easy. And you can see how it's um, sort of built up. This is a relatively simple um, time series um, chart. Um, 
So let's now go and look, we're going to look at a couple of things which are slightly more um, involved. First, I'm, just, I'm actually going to skip, I'm going to come back to one. I'm going to look at the maps, because I always think they, these are quite nice. I, um, I used to work for someone who always insisted the best way to make people think that you'd done loads of work was to, uh, to make a map. Um, so, um, and they're visually um, quite appealing. So, to, um, to create the map, you're just importing the same packages um, as before. Um, importing the same data as before. We're also importing some extra data on continents. It's actually in the repo, this data, but because I want to classify color the charts by continent, I need to put some extra data into the data set to match contributors to the continents. And you can see what's in the continents data set here. So you can see, luckily, in the, in the original COVID data, there is a column, it's one called countries and territories code, which actually matches this three letter country code. This is the IC3 code. So using that, we can match these two data sets um, in together. So again, we do the similar um, sort of data wrangling we did before to get the dates sorted and, and to get the order sorted as well. Um, we also create a variable um, of the cumulative sum as well, because if you'll notice in the original data set, you've only got um, day by day cases um, and deaths. But actually, what's kind of more interesting is to see over time what the cumulative total um, for each country is. So what I've done to create those is actually use the group by, because remember, we want it to sum only over one country at a time and use the, the come sum function from, um, from pandas as well. So you end up with a, you can have a total case and total death variable as well. We then need to add in uh, the continents data. So this is where I'm just using uh, pandas merge to do that um, and merging on the country territory code and the three letter country code, which um, are the same. And as a result, um, you, you can just check that, that you've got and this extra data here. So now we've got a, um, a continent name. And just to note, there's a couple, there's, there's some places which are not classified. So for example, the, the Japanese boat won't have a, um, a continent as well. So there's a, there's a, there will be a few missing um, in the continent classification. I've also um, made a, um, these are just a couple of um, variables which uh, may become useful. Um, when titling the chart, uh, so that's taking these basically take data, um, or the latest data, um, and turn it into a string, because actually the date time format um, that date wrap in can be quite ugly, because um, it's got all of the minutes and seconds and everything. And when you're putting it on a site, you don't necessarily want to see all those as well. This is just formatted to show the latest date, month, um, and year. So, plotting um, the map. So this is a slightly different kind of format, um, but um, the kind of the building blocks um, are the same. So I, I, uh, this is slightly more complicated. So where we had go bar before, we've now got this this element called go scatter geo, um, and it has its own arguments. So we are creating a trace and we're, we're here we're just adding it straight away the figure rather than making a list. It's just a different way of doing things in Plotly. Um, Lucky it has this mode, so it will recognize the three letter codes and, and plot them. So you don't have to do an extra work here. Um, the locations, these will be, so these are just, these are the three letter codes in the data set itself. And then we put in a series of parameters um, about the markers that we want on the um, on the map, and we can you can play with those, and you'll you'll see what they do um, in a second. This loop here, um, I've actually put in because I want things coloured by continent. If you weren't bothered about things being different coloured, you wouldn't you wouldn't need to have um, this loop in here. What it does is allow each continent to have um, a different colour. 
So this is where we've created the trace. Then again, as before, we do some updates to the layout. So I've adjusted the width and the height. I've added a, a title. And you can use HTML tags here to kind of format the title a bit. It's a little bit ugly, um, but it works. Um, and here's some other, these are layout parameters for the, um, for the map itself. So you've got, you can tell it what color the land of the map should be in the coastlines and all sorts of things that you can play with um, from a stylistic sense here. And then you do figure show and you get something like this. So here you can see the, the, the bubbles um, are the size of the, um, the total coronavirus deaths. So these are the cumulative deaths. And what's nice is you can see that as you um, scroll over, you can actually see the total number of, um, of deaths coming up um, as well. So yeah, it's kind of nice to sit in a map. And you can zoom in and zoom, and zoom out here as well. And what's actually nice is um, if you've been playing about um, with it too much, you just reset it um, and it will go back. And you could also, in the same way before, just remove Europe if it's um, too big and have a look at um, what everything else um, is doing as well. And it's kind of, I mean, I, I think the one thing this, this chart really brings out is just how significant um, the deaths have been in, in Europe um, so far, even compared to Asia where um, the outbreak started as well. And you can see this kind of significantly growing uh, bubble as well in, in the US. Luckily so far, um, not so much in, in Africa, but uh, fingers crossed there. So that's the, um, the map. Now I'm going to take you through a, another kind of a slightly more um, sophisticated chart. So again, we're going to read in um, our packages. Um, and then we're also going to read in um, uh, our data. We are going to do the same uh, transformations we've done before, so sending date to date time. We are going to sort our values by um, country and date, um, as we did before, so things are in the right order. Um, and we're going to re-index it. Now, the chart we're going to make, um, the charts we're going to make are these ones. And I don't know whether you're, you're familiar with them at all, but I've seen many different versions um, of the same chart. These ones uh, appeared in the Financial Times in the UK. But just taking a few minutes to kind of understand um, what is going on um, here. So um, what you have um, is a chart which is showing, so on the x-axis you can see you've got, this is for, for death, the number of days since the 10th death. Um, so every country starts at zero once it surpasses um, 10 deaths. So what that means is um, at day 10, this may be um, mid-March for Korea, but this is early April um, for the US as well. So we're going to have to do some stuff for the data um, to get it in the, um, in the right format here. But also note what's going on as well um, with the y-axis. Um, it is not a normal axis. Um, what, has what has been done here is, is we've seen um, the axis logged. So it's using a logarithm. Um, and what that enables us to do is actually look at the growth rate um, of the virus um, rather, than, well, rather than necessarily the numbers themselves. Because if you see as the curve bends over, that means the growth rate in deaths or in, in cases um, is actually falling. And that's, I mean, you may well, if you've been following uh, a lot of the coverage, um, it's something that people have talked a lot about, a lot about flattening um, the curve. Um, and see, most countries in this, we're doing Spain still, 
um, at the time of uh, that this chart was created, it was last week, um, we're still seeing um, a very similar rate um, of growth. So they weren't at the time seeing a slowdown um, in the um, in the rate of growth. Also, it's also in our, our most of the charts you see this line as well, which we want to put in, just showing like how fast um, the um, the growth rate is increasing um, as well. And we've also clearly got a number of um, different countries on here as well, so so we'll want to put those. Um, and you can see here is a, a very similar thing um, done for cases, but just indexed in a um, in a slightly different way as well. So this is this is what we're going to try and um, emulate, so that you can have your own version um, that's also um, interactive as well. So firstly, we need to create the variables. So as before, we're creating here the cumulative sum uh, variables um, for each country. Um, so all the cases of the UK are summed over time, all the cases of the US um, are summed over time. So that in the latest date, it has the highest um, number. What I'm also going to do um, is, is create some functions. Now, um, when sort of coding in Python, it's always a good idea to try and, once you've written your code, try and make, take any repetitive um, tasks out into functions which you can then apply because it makes the code generally easier to read um, and quicker to write as well. So I've written a couple of functions that are going to help us here. So this make chart data is going to take out, well, it's going to, for each um, line, each trace we want to make, it's going to make chart data, so the data that we're going to use. Because we're going to go, want to use every single country, we can just apply this um, function to the whole list of countries to get um, uh, a separate data set for each country. Um, and the second function is a little bit more complicated. So here, this is where we're going to do um, the re-indexing of the data. Now, as I said before, if we go up, we can see that at the, um, that the start, at the moment, the country reaches then death. Um, the data set, um, as it stands, is arranged in date order. Um, so if you plotted it, these lines would be at all different um, positions. So what we need to do is shift um, all of the data so that for each country, the day um, when it becomes, when it surpasses 10 deaths or, um, you know, or, or whatever number we choose, um, becomes index point zero. So what I've done here um, is created a function which takes the data set. It takes the this argument here, which is the var, the variable. So this is the choice between do you want total cases or do you want total deaths, so that we can use it um, in both cases. Um, then um, what it does um, is essentially it says, okay, what's the what's the first day? Um, and it's um, so so it'll, it'll define for that for each country or data the index number, which you know the, the default here is ten, and then it'll shift the data set back um, by that number. Um, and hopefully I could show you in a minute exactly um, what it does. Now, in some cases, there's no data at all, so this function won't work. So hence, um, we have a, a try except loop here. This is probably better for you to have a little play with what this does, rather than um, sort of talking through it. It's only helpful level. OK, so let's create um, the basic chart. So here, we're choosing a few countries that we want to have a look at. Um, we're going to look at total cases. Uh, we're sort of going to index to the, the first day that the country passed 100 cases. Um, then what we're going to do is going to create um, a series of objects for collecting um, the data frames, the traces that we, um, that we need for plotting. Um, 
and for collecting so for collecting those traces um, at the end. So here we apply our, our two functions. Um, so it's the re we make the chart data first. So um, we get a, an end for that country. We get a, um, its specific data set. Then we re-index on the total cases variable uh, back to the point where um, that country passes um, 100. We do this. What we can do is we get a chart um, like this. So just to show you um, what is going on here. So here you've got Italy, China, um, and the United Kingdom. So at the moment we've just got a normal axis. Um, and so you can see what happened with um, China here. So China's had the disease for, for far longer than any other country, hence the, the line extends um, out um, a lot longer. And we can see for a long time it had um, the most cases, but then was surpassed um, by Italy, which has seen uh, cases growing more rapidly and hasn't achieved this flattening um, that China did. And on here I've put my own country, the, uh, the UK um, as well, and you can see you know, for all intents and purposes actually seems to be following um, the, uh, the chart of Italy um, as well. And like before, you can uh, toggle on and off um, different, different chart elements as well. So, so here's the kind of, that they're the building blocks um, of this chart. Now, what we want to do is not just um, plot those four necessarily. What we want to be able to do is choose whatever countries we, we want to look at. And also at the same time, I'm going to add a few um, axis labels um, as well, because it's always good to see what's um, been going on. So um, what we're going to do is instead of before just having a list, what we've done is just taken every country from the data set by just using this um, unique method um, from the date um, on the, the list of countries. Um, and then we're just using exactly the same code as above. I then added those layout features. So put the title in, um, and I made it a bit more complicated because I've, so that we can update the title um, every time we change the index value um, or uh, we want to change between cases um, and, and deaths. I also don't like it when in the titles there's an underscore between words. So this, these splits are just removing um, the underscore. So, and when you run that, this is what you get. So it looks very colourful, looks very nice. Um, and so you can see here you've got a lot of countries, and if I, you know, you can load lots and lots of countries together, it's very nice. Um, and you can deselect and reselect um, as before. So that's fine. I, mean, I guess though, if you're looking at this and you want to just look at a few countries, it's a bit of a tedious task to go and deselect every single element of this till, uh, till you end up only with a list of out of 204 that you actually um, want to see. So this, there is a solution to this. So what we're going to do is create a default list of countries to show on the chart and then allow the user add um, further ones as they like. So this is your, um, I've just chosen a default list of countries I know have a lot of data um, already. Um, and then what I've done is before we only had one, we didn't have an if-else statement um, here. But what, what this does, it says for all the countries in the default list, they just, traces are made just as they were before. If they're not in the default list, then I've added this argument. It's called visible legend only. Um, and what that does, it says it should only appear on the legend and not on the chart. So I also said we were going to at the same time um, change the scale of the axis. So we're going we're to make it to um, a log axis, which is very easy to do. 
Um, the only complexity comes once you change it to a log axis is that then you have to, when you give it instructions about what the range should be, you also have to um, talk in, in log terms. So here to set the, um, the first value of the, of the y axis, you actually have to do the, the log of um, the index here. And six is actually the, the, the log value. Um, rather than the absolute value um, of, the up, of the upper range uh, that you want the y-axis. So, if we, we can then show this, and this is what you get. So, you can see here, that now the charts are starting to look a little bit more curved, um, and you've got, um, a, and you've got a series of, um, We've only got sort of what would we six six or so um, different um, countries on here as well. And you, again, you can know if you're interested um, in what other countries. So if we add India to it, the India has now uh, appeared, for example, um, on this chart. And because we have so many countries, we end up um, repeating um, countries. Um, uh, colors on this chart. It is a problem. I mean, you can you can make your palette much bigger, but you'll always end up having a couple of colors that are very similar. Similar. So it's really up to the the person making the chart how they want what they want to show in the first place, and then selecting their their color scheme um, carefully and um, to make it sort of visually um, appealing. So that's that. The next thing we wanted to do was actually to add. A, a rate of increase. So we just want to add a, a line to help vis people visually understand um, what is going on here. So what we do um, is a couple of things. So we basically define some new traces, with, with which are, uh, will be straight lines um, on this chart. So just as you create new traces, these are just Um, you just um, the x value of the chart. Um, the y values you basically have to calculate. So what I want to show is what's the line for um, decimal cases doubling every three days, every two days, and every seven days. So here you just have to work out. This is just a, a, a formula. Um, work out how it look on a um, on a log chart. So you, you can play with that in your own time and see what happens when you when you change those numbers. There's three days, two days, um, and seven days. So we just define an extra trace, which we add into um, the list um, of traces that we're going to plot. What we also want to do um, is to add annotations so people know what these lines actually mean. Um, and so this is a function of uh, Plotly where you can actually add onto the chart um, text. The thing is, you have to tell it exactly where to put that text, um, which can be relatively time consuming in itself. I mean, for these, I just did it visually. Um, I looked at the chart and, and moved them around by changing these X and Y coordinates, which basically say where um, on, the, on the chart you want them to be. Um, but you, I mean, you can write formulas to place them in, in specific um, places as well. And then you just put whatever text you want, um, and you can put some more formatting um, parameters as well, um, if you like. So here I've just added those three annotations for the three lines. Then we, we put those all together. We've got our, our layouts. Um, in the layout, to, to include the annotations, we have to include an extra argument here, which is um, telling the figure what the annotations are. And I, because I've called my list of annotations annotations, it's annotations equals annotations. I think everything else um, is the same here. So you can see this is what you get. Let me see if I can. There we go. And here you've got these lines um, which show you, okay, so if you're, you're Lines as steep as this one, your case is going to be doubling every day. If it's as steep as this one, it's every three days. 
as steep as this one is doubling um, every week. So you can see at the beginning, some of these countries were we've seen cases double every day. Um, most of them have kind of flattened off. So they're not doubling every three days um, anymore. Some are still sort of between three days um, and a week um, as well. Um, what's also what I've also done, you actually see on the on the legend that you can click on and off these lines as well, if you like. Um, I've also um, on these as well, in, on the lines included this, the hover info equals skip. Um, and what that does is turn, where oh, every time I roll over the line here, I can see the information on Italy. I've actually turned it off for these um, lines, just because when I was looking at it all the time, it got quite annoying. Um, so I decided not to, um, not to look at them, not to have them on, uh, but completely uh, sort of a matter of style, a matter of choice. Um, so that's kind of that's most of the chart, really. I've done a, a few final bits of um, tidying up. So I've formatted the hover labels. I've added a subtitle and a footnote. Um, and as before, because I told you I don't like the underscores in, in country names, um, I've got rid of um, those as well. So I can, I mean, it's basically the same plot um, as we had before. Um, but here, so in this argument, in the when you're making the trace, this hover template, what you can do is you can format um, what what appears in the in these little um, boxes when you roll over. And here it's kind of a quite ugly, I, I will admit, it's a mixture of HTML um, and Python uh, in, in here. Um, but again, it works. So this basically puts um, the text values um, that you specify here, um, the word cases, and um, also then puts the, the, whatever the Y value uh, is as well into your um, into your label. What else did I say, say I was going to do? Yeah, so I had a subtitle and footnote. Um, the way I add a uh, add a, a footnote is just in the same way I added uh, an annotation. So I write the um, I write the annotation. I give it some instructions about approximately where I want it, um, which are these, these X and Y values here. And then I just append it um, to the annotations as well. Again, you know, in the layout, you can play with all sorts of things. You know, you can change the, the title font, you change uh, the type of font. You know, there are millions and millions of different formatting parameters that you can then play with to make, um, to, to personalize your chart. Um, here and it's well worth just having a look at the, the the documentation to see what's going on. So then, there is your complete chart, and you can see here you've got a little um, sort of footnote um, uh, included here, and the um, hover labels are now kind of uh, formatted in a um, in a slightly different way, and you can read off them um, as you like. Um, and then we could just use basically uh, the same code to, to plot deaths rather than cases, um, which is to change the var we're using. We also need to change the scale of the axes because there's been fewer, a lot fewer deaths than, than cases. Um, and we want to choose the sort of change the indexing point. So, um, but other than that, it's basically um, the same chart. Um, so if we run, we can run this and what we can see um, is that we, um, uh, this is the outcome. So again, and you can, you can, you click the, the um, button in the corner, you can then compare um, what's happening at each sort of day um, of the crisis um, across countries. Those are those charts. I just want to ask, uh, check in whether there's any questions. I realise I've been steaming ahead and I'm trying to 
look at, find out if there's any questions. Um, I will uh, it as a no. Drop your questions in the question box in the chat area. If you have any question, you can drop the question in the chat area and we'll answer them. I'll just give you a minute for a break. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, no questions so far. I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, so, that's a slightly more complicated type of chart. Now, let's we can talk about, a little bit about um, animated charts. Because these are fun. Um, so, the animated charts like, just show basically a little video uh, of things happening. So, again, we're importing packages, we're re reading the data, doing the same kind of cleaning um, as before, um, we create yeah, the same cu um, cumulative um, data series. And now let's just think about the kind of chart. There's lots of different charts we could plot. But what I was going to do is plot, um, basically animate the following chart. So this is just a chart of, um, of death by country. So this is a snapshot in time of um, of the data. And what I want to do is basically show how that evolves um, over time in an animation. So, to do that, um, there's actually a couple of things we're going to do. So, firstly, we're going to add a slider so that the user can like slide between dates to show how this data looks um, at a different um, point in time. So, firstly, um, so we have a first thing to understand. Um, in its kind of like basis, it it works in a similar way um, to all the charts we've been seeing before. We have to define the the traces that we're using, um, and we also have arguments for the layout um, as well. Um, but what we have to include um, to, to create the slider is an extra right. argument layout function it tells it which steps to take as you scroll through the slider. Um, so what we basically need to do is go through each data point and add um, an extra step. Um, so this is what we are um, doing here. Then um, we add those to this term called sliders. Um, and this slider defines what the slider looks like and then defines what all the steps are um, as well. And these, each of these steps corresponds to a trace that we've made because we've made a trace for each of the days um, in the data set as well. Um, we can then um, add layout terms as, as we would have done uh, before. But remember, we've also added an extra term here, which is to include the slider. And it has all the, inf and all the information that we're, is in this sliders um, object here as well. So when we do that, what we see is we end up with something like this. So, what you can do, you can see that this is where we are today, but if we went back right to the 16th of February, it was only China um, that really had cases, and then that grew over time. So, this is deaths, actually. Um, and you can see that more and more and more countries um, experience deaths, and so uh, have appeared on the chart as well. So, that's quite an interesting a sort of way of viewing snaps across time. But we want to do a little bit more than that. So, what I want to do is, so that's just adding a slider. I actually want to add something that we can play as a, as a little video and watch it evolve over time. But also, I want to make it 
visually a little bit more interesting. Um, so I'm going to color code it by continent again, just so you can see how um, the pandemic really shifted from Asia um, to Europe. So as before, I'm going to add in um, all of the, the, the data on continents, match it into the original data set. Um, I'm then going to create a number of um, objects, lists, strings, dictionaries that are going to be useful uh, when we're plotting this chart. So firstly, I am going to make a series in the data set, which is the date versus the string. Because actually the animations plot these struggles a little bit to deal with um, date time formatted um, data. So I'm going to use it actually as a string. Um, I'm then going to make a list of days. So these are all the days I want it to animate through. I'm also going to make a color dictionary um, so that I can map continents um, on, onto their colors. Um, and then I'm also going to say, OK, I only want a certain number of countries on the chart, because once you've got 150 countries on the chart, it's actually really difficult to see. So I, I only want to see the top 20. Um, I'm also going to put in, in case I want to change a threshold. So I might want to say a country should only appear once they've reached 10 deaths or something like that. But I'm going to set it for zero um, for now. Um, so. This gets a little bit more involved. Um, again, the elements are effectively the same as before, but this time you need to create a list of frames um, which the animation is going to, to run through. Um, but what you do is you start off with one of the snapshots, and that's in Sub Oracle, etc. Hello, please. I can't hear. I can't just hear anything. So. Yeah, hello, Rachel. Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear sorry, you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I think, yeah, the internet sometimes fails you. Um, sorry, I was just going through it. So this is the code to make the animation, right? Um, and I suggest you go through it um, in your own time. But what we can see, so we've got, we've got the slider at the bottom as well. So if we do this, we can create a little animation over time. Um,
you can see that as um, as time progresses, you then get more and more um, countries on the chart as well. Um, and then you can and go back to a different point in time, and there you can see, um, you know, mid March, China had easily the most deaths. A couple of weeks later, Italy and Spain um, were charging ahead as well. And this principle of animation can be quite easily applied to um, any charts. It just takes a little bit of thinking about how to describe all, all of the frames uh, that you require. So that's the chart. And just, just to finish quickly, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about, once you've made these charts, how you can help other people um, to see them. So, the same as before, you've got all your charts in this workbook. I won't go through uh, all of these again. Safe to say, so I've got, I've got um, four, four of my the charts that I produced before here. So, so this is the most recent one as well. So this is figure four. And then if you want to share your charts um, with other people, you, you've got a few options. Firstly, you can use Totley's Chart Studio. To do that, you'll need to sign up for an account, get an API key. It is free, but you have to sign up for yourself. You'll then need to get a username and an API key. I've written mine in a separate file so that I don't have to, they don't appear on GitHub and someone else can use my, my details. Um, you can just import those. Um, and then it's actually the codes quite easily. So you can then deploy it to um, to Chart Studio. Now, if the internet's working, this might it should then load. And this is this is the link I could share with then you could um, and that's when it doesn't work. Hold on a second. <laughs> All right, try one I did earlier. Yeah, there you can see it's, it's deployed on the internet, and I can share that that link with anyone. So that is live um, on the internet. Your second option um, is to just get the HTML. So using the simple command, you can write basically an HTML file. I just um, I can just do this, um, and you come up. It produces this HTML file, and I can just click on this. If I go trust HTML, HTML, you can see here's the chart. Um, I can open it and actually see um, um, I open with, I can just see all the HTML code behind it. It's a little bit ugly, but if you have your own website, this basically contains all of the information you'd need to recreate that chart, including the data as well. So um, that's another option uh, for you as well. Um, and the last option is to do um, create a, a Plotly dashboard. Um, so Dash is a package designed to help you deploy and make your dashboards. And it takes the individual Plotly charts you've made um, and basically formats them um, into an app. Um, so. That's what I showed at the beginning. But I mean, the code is relatively simple. And um, this is kind of your basic um, Dash app. Let me see if I might have to rerun the workbook. So this is now running locally. I just put that there. Yeah, hello, Rachel. Uh, sorry, I, I can't see your screen. I don't know if it's only me, but I must, I'm just seeing the. It's, uh, oh, sorry. It's, it's, Hold, hold on a second. It says I'm sharing. I'll stop sharing and reshare. Oh. Oh, you're not sharing your screen. Okay. Is that is that correct? Yes. Okay. I can see the screen now. Can you see it now? There, let me just get. On. Can, you, can you see the the chart? Are you seeing a chart now? 
Yes. Sorry, sorry. Let me just. You can see now your chart is running locally. Um, and you can then you can add multiple charts together. And you, again, you can style the Dash app as well. Um, so I've just done something very, very simple here. Um, so I've just added all of my four charts into a little app. And there you go. That's what it looks like. Um, and you can make your charts. Then, you know, if you have your own deployment platforms, use those. You know, you can use something like Amazon's uh, Elastic Beanstalk, um, which has, has a special kind of wrapper um, to help you deploy these sorts of dashboards. But there you go. It's only, you know, that was one workbook of code, um, and you've got your own um, dashboard, which you can rearrange and, and format um, to your heart's content. So that, that's it from me, really. I mean, I, I realised that was a bit of a canter through quite a lot of code, and I, I'm not sure how much you, you all heard, but thank you very much for, for listening. And if there are any questions about the code or whatever, um, then please do feel free to get in touch. Um, yes. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for this. Um, we've had a very nice session today. And um, I really appreciate this. And um, uh, you know, do so uh, wait, can someone? Okay, yeah, back now. Someone chipped in a, uh, there's a question as regards the modeling. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, um, it is particular code to a model. I, I can't hear you. This into a model. So could you repeat that? You you were you were cutting out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. Sorry about that. I think it's a network issue. So now there's a question. The, the question is, uh, how do we convert this to like into a model? Say, for example, you're working on a project and uh, you need to um you need to implement this particular um plotly code in a, in a model. Or something like that. How do we? How do one convert it into a model? So, I, mean, I think you would be using the same principles. I mean, you. I'm, I'm trying to think of a good example. So let's let's say you um, wanted to show, I don't know, the coefficients from a um, a regression, uh, for example. You would need to take those. And format them either as a, a NumPy array or a um, like a pandas um, data frame, and then you could plot them, you know, as a bar chart or something like that. Or if you wanted to show, um, for example, you were doing running a neural network, uh, and you wanted to show the trading loss um, and the validation loss um, over time, um, sort of with um, the number of iterations or epochs, what you could do is output from your, um, as part of your network training, um, a NumPy array of values for, for your loss, um, and then feed them in um, to a Plotly chart in the format, um, in the same way, in a similar way that I've been, been showing you is that, there. So you might want to choose a like a go scatter. Um, you have your x value as your number of epochs, your y value um, as your as your loss, um, and then you could show that as a as a static plotly chart or show that as a as an animation um, over time. I hope, hope that answers your question. Yes, after the, the question. Okay, yeah. Then someone else posted a question as regards uh, where can you get the link, the Git link? Okay, I think we'll. we'll, uh, we'll okay, for those um, joining, we're, we're going to post the link uh, via the emails, um, emails of everyone who registered. We'll post the Git link there. Although, although we sent it already, but if you don't have it, we're still going to send it via email. Okay. Um, any other question again?
um, Eniola um, Olawali um, okay Imam are there any questions? All right then. Um, so, in the absence of um, no further questions, um, okay, okay I, I guess we have come to a wrap. We are wrapping up the session already. Um, I really want to appreciate uh, Richard for taking out our time to take this webinar with us. And um, uh, it's been a very, it's been a very interesting one. Um, been a very interesting one taking us how to go around plot B. I know recently back there when the team was working around the um, hackathon and hackathon project. And uh, they were required to use Plotly. I think Plotly was a challenge for them, you know. And I think this particular webinar kind of um, exposes, um, kind of shows, it's very, it's very expository, you know. It shows um, everyone how to go around Plotly with Python and um, for um, for data science. Um, if I may ask, is, is there a way you can combine Plotly with, with uh, Microsoft Power BI? Um, I'm going to have to pass on that one. I don't know. Um... I mean, my, my sense is having used Power BI that, that Plotly is a little bit more flexible um, I mean, in terms of if I, if I was choosing. But I get, you can embed Python objects in, in Power BI, but whether you can get the interactivity, I don't know. Um, oh. Okay. All right. All right. Um, all right, then. Um, all right, then. Okay, thank you everyone again for coming. Um, thank you for your time uh, for attending our second um, edition of our webinar um, from machine learning to this. Um, we appreciate your time. And um, for everyone that joined us, we had people joining us from India. We had someone from Bauchi, North Nigeria. We had from um, we had from um, Abuja and um, Lagos, Ibadu, and Ogun State. Um, we really appreciate your time. Um, we appreciate your time for coming. Um, thank you again. Let's see. I think. Um, Okay, yeah, we have uh, Emmanuel Jogger from Lagos. Um, Emmanuel, if you have a question, you can post your question as well. And let us know if you have any question. And um, okay, so, um, Suleiman was asking if, uh, okay, the video, uh, the session video will be made available for everyone via the link, via, via the email order. Um, so we get to have the, the video session for the webinar. Okay, um, any other feedback again in that question? All right then, uh, that we see for that time. Yeah, thank you everyone. So we've come to an end of today's webinar. Yeah, see you some other time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Rachel.